There's three steps to selling your product on Amazon. The first step is to find a product. Amazon is the world's largest marketplace where people go to buy and sell things. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to find a product that people want to buy, also how to manufacture your product, basically all the tips and tricks I have on how to find a winning product to sell on Amazon. Then we're gonna talk about how to list your product because Amazon is an online store, it's an online site. You have to have a good listing. We're gonna talk about some tricks on not only how to get your listing to the top of Amazon search results, but also how to make it so people wanna buy your product. This includes things like the title, the main image, how to properly format your bullet points, how to get reviews. And I do have a trick, I got like a step-by-step -step formula on how to get legitimate reviews. And when you get more reviews, it's more likely that people are going to buy your product on Amazon and it's also more likely that Amazon will put your product to the top of the search results which is where most people buy things from most people search on Amazon for a product and if your product comes up at the top of the search results they're going to buy your product and then finally number three we're going to talk about how to launch your product and this is such a key thing. So many people miss this step, but the whole point of this step is to get as many reviews and as many purchases of your product within the first few days as possible. And if you get a lot of reviews and a, and a lot of purchases from day one, that's going to snowball into more and more success. It's gonna make Amazon want to put your product at the top of the search results. So why sell on Amazon, you might be asking yourself. Well, one of the biggest things is e-commerce is growing. I went to the mall recently and malls are dead. People are no longer actually going into a lot of brick and mortar stores, or at least not as much as they used to, to purchase things. And why is that? If you ask anyone about that, well, they're gonna tell you it's because of Amazon. And Amazon has over 50% of all e-commerce transactions. So all online transactions, all online purchases, about 50% of them happen on Amazon. So that's a really big deal. The, the old way of doing things, the brick and mortar way of doing things is dying. Amazon, pretty obviously, is leading the charge. And because of this, Amazon is a trillion dollar company. Now that's not, that's not a million dollar company. That's not even a billion dollar company. That's a trillion dollar company. There's so much opportunity happening on Amazon right now. And, and right now, basically, of all the sales that happen on Amazon, about 50% of them are coming from people like you and me. 50% of all sales on Amazon are from what's called third-party sellers. And I'm, I'm one of these sellers, and there's about 200 other, 200,000 other sellers that are doing over $100,000 in sales. And that's including me. I'll talk about my numbers later, but I'm doing well over $100,000 uh, from Amazon. But this, I, I, I wanna point this out. This is why it's such a big opportunity. I think a lot of people don't realize how much money there is to be made on Amazon. And I'm here to tell you, look, a trillion dollars and that's 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 a lot of money and this is an opportunity I want to make sure you don't miss out on and that's why I created this free video is to show you step by step how to sell on Amazon how people are getting rich off of Amazon my name is Travis for anybody that's new to the channel and this is what I talk about on this channel I talk about e-commerce I talk about Amazon specifically how to create products and sell them on Amazon and I actually personally do sell on Amazon so I share a lot of my stories a lot of my struggles and my entire journey and at any point during this video, if you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. I answer every single question, uh, usually within 24 hours, but no matter what, if you leave a question, if at any point you're unsure about something, put it in the comments down below. Even right now, if you have something that pops into your mind, put it in the comments down below. Other than that, this is what I want you to do. I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. I highly recommend watching this video in full. I structured it so even if at some point something doesn't make sense, Later on in the video, I will I will clear everything up. I made this to be something that you could watch without taking any notes, and I recommend the first time you watch it, just sit back and relax. The second time, actually go in, take detailed notes. But like I said, even if you don't take notes, you're still gonna learn so much from this video, so don't put pressure on yourself the first time around in taking notes. And at any point, if this video is too fast, you can slow it down, or if it's too slow for you, you can put it at 2x speed. If you go to the bottom of your little YouTube screen here, there's a settings, and you can increase the speed. 
And then the last thing, I put timestamps in the description. So if you ever wanna go back to a certain section or if you wanna skip ahead, you're really interested in certain sections or you come back to this video later and you wanna just jump around, there are timestamps in the description. So feel free to move around as you please. Now I made this video so you could have everything in one place, everything you need to know to sell on Amazon in one place because there are a lot of videos on YouTube about how to sell on Amazon, but it's kind of like a little piece here and a little piece of information here, but I wanted to condense it all down into one A to Z beginner to expert video and that's, that's what this video is. I'm even guilty of this. I have a lot of 10, 20 minute videos and the truth is you can't learn everything you need to know to sell on Amazon in 10 or 20 minutes. So I tried to combine all my different videos on all the different aspects of selling on Amazon and putting it in this one video. And this is why this video is so valuable. It's, I honestly believe this video you're watching right now is the most valuable video I have ever made on YouTube. And I've, I'm really proud of a lot of the videos I've made. I've shared a lot of my struggles. I've shared a lot of the mistakes I've made. That's most of my videos are actually about mistakes I've made and, and the lessons I've learned. But this video right here is going to be the most valuable video on Amazon I've definitely made. Probably the most valuable video on Amazon you're going to find on YouTube. And it's also up to date. There's a lot of tutorials on how to sell on Amazon that I've seen on YouTube that just has the wrong information. Uh, and part of this is because a lot of these videos came out in 2018 or 2019. And those videos are just, it's out, to, out of date. The internet is a very fast paced world and things are always changing. And that's why I decided to make this video and release it for free. So you can know the most up to date information. And like I said, this is going to be an A to Z video. So it's going to go very much in, in sequence. I'm going to go from like beginning all the way, like from an idea all the way to a product on how to launch it, all that information. And it's also going to take you from a beginner to an expert by the end of this video. And most people, when they're learning Amazon, they do it the hard way. And this is what I did. And I really wish I wouldn't have, but I tried to learn Amazon the hard way. I, most people try to learn Amazon by themselves. I was guilty of this and because of that, I struggled a lot. You don't need to do it by yourself. There's already other people that have sold on Amazon, including myself, that you can learn from. So don't think you need to go figure everything out and make all the mistakes yourself. Just don't do that. Most people also spend hours and hours of researching. I've seen a lot of people that go from video to video to video trying to figure out the perfect you know, method to sell on Amazon and that's a, a really big mistake. Jump in and I'm gonna talk about this later, but one of the big aspects of this video or having success in general is you need to take action. So at a certain point, you're going to have to, to jump in. So if you find yourself constantly watching Amazon how-to videos, but never actually doing it, hopefully this will be a wake-up call for you. And I see a lot of people also making thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in, uh, in mistakes. And again, I was guilty of this. I've probably made about $50,000 worth of mistakes on Amazon, and I'm gonna talk about some of those later, that could have been avoided if I would have watched videos like this. So learn from other people's mistakes, and ultimately, one of the biggest mistakes I see people making is they struggle and they end up giving up too early, and I wanna prevent that from happening for you. So the better way to learn, find a mentor. Now. It doesn't need to be someone that's doing a billion dollars or anything crazy like that. Find someone that's one or two steps ahead of you. And if you are new to Amazon, I'm happy to be that person for you. That's why I created this free full length tutorial. That's why I create my YouTube videos for free is I really want to help you out. I wish I could go back in time and save myself a lot of the pain and struggle I went to. I can't, but what I can do is I can help you out. And the other thing is a lot of people, like I said, they, they try to get their information piecemeal. Uh, they, they find one little bit of information here, one little bit of information over there. The better way to do it is to have all your knowledge in one place. I wish, one of my biggest mistakes, I wish I would have bought a course on how to sell on Amazon because that would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of struggle. You don't need to buy a course, but again, this is why I released this video for free is because it's gonna have all your knowledge in one place. So instead of constantly jumping around with shiny object syndrome, just focus on one method to sell on Amazon, one tutorial video like this one, or if you do wanna get a course, get a course and just follow it step by step. The last bit of information that I will give to you, and this is one of the most powerful tools I can pass on, 
is create a support network. And there's different ways to do this. I'll talk about actually, so I do have a mastermind that you can join free. I have a, a mastermind just for, in case you don't know, is where you and a bunch of other like-minded individuals join up together, maybe on a weekly call and kind of share what issues you're going through and you guys all mastermind together. You put your minds together and create what's called a mastermind and try to figure out a solution. So maybe if you're running into an issue that other people in the group have already gone through it before or they can help you come out, come up with a solution. And so at the end of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you basically, I'm gonna tell you how you can get my mentorship for free, how you can get my step-by-step -step guide for free to sell on Amazon. I mean, this is already, this video alone is gonna be enough for you, but I do have a more in-depth step-by-step guide that you can get for free. And I'm gonna give you access, if you want, to the support network, so a, a mastermind community to help you solve your problems. And I'll talk about how you can get all of that for free at the end of this video. That's some incentive for you to stick through it till the end. Now, most people, I'm gonna be honest with you, most people are not gonna stick through it till the end, but I'm hoping that you will be an exception and you'll actually watch this video all the way to the end, but I'm, I'm gonna incentivize you with this. But ultimately, you need to take action. Uh, all the information in the world is useless unless you take action. So as soon as you're done watching this video, start now, take the next little baby step. Again, I want you to treat this video as if it's a thousand dollar course. And this video I'm gonna tell you right now is more valuable. I've, I've seen a lot of Amazon FBA courses and this video alone is more information packed, has more value than a lot of those courses. So honestly, put that in your mindset that you just spent a thousand dollars on this and treat it the same way you would a thousand dollar course. And know, and I, really quick, before I go any further, know that it's going to take hard work. This is not a get rich quick scheme. You're not gonna become a millionaire overnight. D despite what I, I've seen a lot of other YouTubers say, this isn't a get rich quick scheme. It is by far the best way to start a business. This is the easiest way in the history of the world to start a legitimate business, but what we're gonna be talking about here is how to start a legitimate business and it's it's a business and it's going to be some hard work and, and I hope that you're willing to put in the hard work and it's gonna be worth it. This is my last two years of selling just one product on Amazon. I'm gonna share what my product is later in this video. I know a lot of people don't usually talk about what their product is, especially in YouTube videos. Everyone's very hush-hush about that, but I'm gonna share because I, I wanna try to be as honest with you as possible in this video. That's why I'm sharing my numbers, my product, all that kind of stuff, but it's worth it. This is my last two years selling on Amazon $800,000 in sales. Now, I will break down my income reports that revenue is not profit, but still, I, I'm very proud of this. I, I'm, I'm very happy with how my first two years of selling this one product have gone. And I'm gonna talk about in just a minute how I did it, how I was able to, like my story and step-by-step -step how I was able to do it. And then after that, I'm gonna talk about even more in depth, step-by-step -step, how you can do it. But before I get into that, let's talk about what I'm going to share in this video. So I'm gonna share all the different Amazon business models. There's not, there's not just one way to sell on Amazon. There's probably about four main ways to sell on Amazon. And I'm gonna talk about all of them. And I have one of them that is by far my favorite, but you know what, the one that's right for you might not be the one that is my favorite. I'm also gonna talk about a new opportunity for making money on Amazon. This is something that nobody else is talking about. There's a lot of people doing this method. There's a lot of people making a ton of money doing exactly what I'm gonna talk about in this video on Amazon, but I haven't seen a single one on YouTube actually sharing their stories, sharing these strategies. And I think the reason is they're too busy making money. They're too busy um, basically trying to get rich off their own businesses that they don't feel the need or they don't have the time to share the information. The reason I'm a little bit different is my goal, and I'll talk about this later, my goal since I quit my job was to be making $300 a day passive income. And my business on Amazon is doing that. And so for me to try to make $500 a day or $1,000 a day, that doesn't sound that rewarding. What sounds much more rewarding to me is to help other people do exactly what I'm doing because I, I'm, I'm proud of it. And I think that it, it took a lot of struggle for me to get here. And so I wanna share that information. And this new opportunity, if you know what private labeling is, this is like private label 2.0. This is going to be, in my opinion, the next big opportunity on, on Amazon. It's gonna be the next big gold rush. And 
please get in on this before it becomes saturated like private label has. Uh, I'm also gonna talk about a new way to find products because I don't think you need to spend the money on Jungle Scout or Viral Launch. The old product research method, in my opinion, is dead and we'll talk about why that is later in this video. I'm also gonna share with you my launch strategy and it's a step-by-step -step launch strategy that if you implement correctly will get you to the number one rank within the first few days if not the first week of you launching your product and this is a very powerful launch strategy. This is a big point of this video so pay attention for that. I'm also gonna share in just a second actually my income report and I'll share, I actually taught my girlfriend how to sell on Amazon. I'm gonna share her income report from last month in detail. And again, my goal with this video is to be as honest as possible. Really share with you all the struggles, all the pros and cons, everything of Amazon. And finally, at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about how to get my help for free, how to get access to my in-depth training, access to my community, uh, part of a mastermind, get my one-on-one -on -one mentorship, all that stuff for free. And this is really the goal of my life. The goal of my YouTube channel, the goal of everything is to help people become successful on Amazon and I want to see you become a success story. So here are just some of the questions I'm going to answer because I know when I started, my head was going to, I had so many questions. I was so unsure of what to do. And here's just some of the common questions I get that I'm going to be answering in this video. How much time do you need if you plan on starting an Amazon business? How much money do you need? And I have very definitive answers for all these. How long will it take before you become successful with Amazon? How much can you make? Like how much can you actually make? And let me just tell you really quickly, um, I'm uh, out of all my friends and people I know selling on Amazon, I'm not the person making the most money. A lot of my friends slash mentors are making quite a bit more money than me. So I'll talk about this later, but how do I know if my product will sell? And then I'll talk about all the different what ifs. I get so many questions on what if this happens or what if that happens. And then the last question I'll answer is what do I do after launch? And I've got a, a really good answer for you on this one as well. In the last two years, I've done over $800,000 in revenue, but that's not profit. I don't get to put that money in my wallet. That There's a lot of costs associated with selling on Amazon, and here's just some of the costs. There's the cost of the product, which cost me over $200,000. You gotta pay for the product that you're gonna be selling on Amazon. There's the Amazon FBA selling fees, which I'll talk to. I'll talk about what these are a little bit later, and the, and the transaction fees. Just for selling on Amazon's platform, there is a 15% fee. They take 15% of the price of basically whatever you're selling. Uh, there's other Amazon fees like storage fees and things like that. There's also PPC and I'll talk about what PPC is a little bit later, but it's pay per click basically. It's a way for you to advertise your product within the Amazon ecosystem and it's extremely powerful. Now this being said, you don't need to spend money on PPC. I actually turned off PPC for a lot of the time that I was selling on Amazon because my product was selling so well without PPC that I didn't actually need it. But it, it can be very, it can be a very powerful tool for marketing your product. And there's just other fees associated with doing a business. And so, because you'll, you'll see this a lot on YouTube, people talk about how much revenue they do or on Instagram or you know Facebook, people are always posting, I did a million dollars in sales. Yeah, but the question is how much profit did you do? And so for me, after calculating all these fees, total profit was a little, well, almost $300,000, over a little bit over $200,000. So I really just wanna quickly say, I'm very, very thankful for that. Like, even though there was a lot of expenses associated with selling on Amazon, I'm, this is so much more money than I made when I was back in my corporate job. And I do want to say as well that trying to, you know, I, I want to be humble about this. Like I'm not by any means the, the most profitable seller out there. I have a lot of friends and, and mentors in the space that are, they, they put me to shame. They're doing 10 X what I'm doing in sales, 10 X. They're making 10 times as much money off of Amazon as me. So by no means, uh, this isn't me bragging. This is just me letting you know what's possible and sharing something that I'm, I'm proud of. And so let me tell you step-by-step step how I did it. So again, my name's Travis Marziani and I, I, this is what I do on this YouTube channel as I talk about Amazon, how I did it, but about seven, well, right out of college, I got a corporate job. And so that was, that was about nine years ago, wow. Uh, and then the first year of my corporate job, I absolutely loved it. It was a lot of fun, I was traveling, whatever, but by the second year, I realized that corporate life is a prison. They, they tell you when to wake up, they tell you when to get to work, they tell you when you can leave, They a lot of times they'll even tell you when you can take a lunch break, and I, I ended up becoming really depressed, and the reason I became so depressed, there's a few reasons, but one is that whole idea of 
being a slave. I was a slave in the corporate world and I, I absolutely hated it. But also there was no incentive for me to work hard. I enjoy working hard as long as I get paid to do so or as long as there's an incentive. And what I found is if I worked my butt off, I would get a 5% raise at the end of the year or I could barely do anything and I'd get a 3% raise and I felt in my corporate job a lot like, like a tiger trapped in a cage. If you've ever been to like a really bad zoo that has cages that are too small for the animals and it's, it's really sad to see, you'll see specifically like the big cats, the tigers, just pacing back and forth in their cage. And that's how I felt in my corporate job. It felt like I'm not someone that usually gets depressed. I'm not like a person that's been prone in my life to depression. But I was, it was the lowest point of my life. I felt like a drone. I, I, it didn't feel like it was me. It felt like I was like a robot that just, in, in between me and reality, there was kind of like a plastic sheet, like nothing, I couldn't feel emotions and it was terrible. And I, I needed to do something and it got, it got so bad that I finally decided I have to quit and I have to find a way to make money outside of the corporate, the corporate world. So about seven years ago, I quit my job and I started a dance clothing company with my mom. This is a picture of us. And, you know, to be honest, I was so happy to be out of the corporate world. But the interesting thing about this is I ended up becoming a slave to myself. I ended up working on this company a bunch. And it wasn't, I'm not a dancer. I'm not into dance clothing. Uh, I, I don't know anything about dance clothing. I'm not passionate about it. But it was a way for me to make money. And that's a little side note, I think. Anytime you find yourself doing something just for the money, as I was with my corporate job, that's a really bad sign. And so that business struggled. Uh, it struggled for a long time. So for the five years after I quit my corporate job, we made money. That business is still around and it, it, it does make some money. And I made enough money maybe to pay the bills, to just get barely get by. But the good thing was I wasn't in the corporate world. But still, when I quit my corporate job, you know, back all this time ago, I had the goal of making $300 a day passive income. That's about six figures a year. And when I say passive income, that means that I could travel. That means I could go uh, go away for a month and my business will keep making me money. And I was struggling and I was struggling. And then I heard about Amazon and Amazon, as we'll talk about, is a freaking amazing opportunity. And something interesting I found is I was meeting a lot of people making a lot of money on Amazon and these people didn't seem like they were working that hard. Uh, I felt like I was harder working than them. They honestly, a lot of the people I met, I felt like I was smarter than. I'm like, I'm, I'm just as smart, if not smarter than you. And any time in your life where you see people that you think you're smarter than, or you think that you're harder working, harder working than, but they're having more success to you, that's when like a light bulb should go off in your head. That's when you should really pay attention. And the thing I saw in common, there's all these people that were new to e-commerce, but yet they were having success. And the, the reason was, unlike me, they weren't trying to get people to go to a website. Like when I was running the dance clothing company, I was trying to get everybody to come to bedancewear.com, our website. And it's very hard to convince people to go to your website. Like that alone is hard to do. On top of that, it's really hard to convince people that you're a legitimate business and that it's safe to put your credit card information in. But what I noticed with Amazon already has people going to it. People are already going to Amazon and people already trust Amazon. So there's all these people, you know, I've been doing e-commerce at this point for five years and there's all these people that have only been doing it for a few months or a year and they were having ridiculous success on Amazon. And that's what I realized. It wasn't that they were, it wasn't that they were necessarily special per se, but they were doing a better method of selling online. They were utilizing this amazing platform. So I thought about it and I realized I need to sell sell something on uh, Amazon. So I came up with this idea for a product and this is my actual product. Like I'm, I told you I'm gonna be as honest and transparent in this video. This is the actual product I sell. sell. This is the product that's made me uh, done over $800,000 in revenue, basically over $275,000 profit. So I came up with this idea and the reason this works so well is unlike the dance clothing company, which we had, we had a lot of SKUs with that company. It was, we'd make dance clothing on demand, but unlike that company, I only had one product, which meant a lot less headaches. And so I had this idea, but yet it wasn't yet a reality. So for me, the next step was to see if anybody else was interested. So I started an Instagram account and I posted on there and I, I tried to get see if people were interested, see if people would follow me. This was before I ever spent a dime on, on buying product, before I spent a dime on really anything. 
And then of the people that were really interested, I had them sign, I had them join an email list. And then after they joined an email list, I got them into a Facebook group. In this Facebook group, I would post things like logo ideas. And I'd ask everyone, hey, which logo is your favorite logo? I'd post a, a picture of what my product is going to look like and ask them, hey guys, what do you think about this product? What do you think about the packaging? And I'd get feedback. And then I'd take that feedback and I would improve the product. And what happened, something really interesting happened. We developed a little bit of a tribe. Like they were as invested in the product as I was because it wasn't just my product, it was all of our product. And what happened is when I launched a Kickstarter to raise the money to do the first production run, I was able to make 15000 almost $15,000 in sales. Now keep in mind, this this $15,000 was only on a promise. I told people, give me $20 now and in three to four months, I'm gonna send you a product. I didn't have to spend almost, uh, barely any money to get that Kickstarter going and I was able to raise $15,000. And I'm gonna talk about obviously in depth in this whole video, how you can do this, how you can replicate this. Cause a lot of people come to me and they say, hey, I don't have a lot of money, but I'd like to sell on Amazon. How do I do it? I say raise the money on a Kickstarter, which I'll, I'll talk about in depth. But after that, I, I ended up eventually launching the product on Amazon a few months later. And what I did again is that product launch group. I told them, hey guys, you know what? It's finally out on Amazon. Can you please buy another box? I, I discounted it a little bit so that they, they were incentivized to buy. Can you buy a box? Can you leave reviews? And within the first week, I was able to get 75 reviews. Now, what ended up happening is I got a spike. I got a bump like from day one in sales. I got a bump from day one in reviews. And Amazon saw this. And Amazon took me from you know hidden on the back page to the first page, the first search result, really, really quickly. And that's the power of what I'm talking about. So once I had Amazon set up within the first probably six weeks, within the first two months for sure, I was I hit my goal almost exactly, like it was creepy how exact it was, of $300 a day passive income. Because as I'll talk about in this video, the good thing about selling on Amazon is once you have everything set up, Amazon takes care of the hard work. Amazon stores the product for you. It ships it to the customer. Amazon already does have all the customers there. It's doing all the marketing. So a lot of the hard work is taken care of for you. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't a get rich quick scheme. You're still gonna have to put in hard work to get your product launched. But once it's launched, it's pretty good. And after I launched my product, these last two years have been some of the best years of my life. I did a ton of, of traveling. I, I moved to my dream location. I'm living in Santa Monica right now by the beach. I'm extremely grateful for everything that Amazon and, and this whole business has done for me. And it's really been like the first five years of my entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey, I struggled a lot. But in these last two years, I've had the most fun I've probably had in my life. And it's thanks to all the stuff I'm going to be teaching you in this video. So my plan with this video is to give you a map on how to conquer Amazon. And the big thing about a map is you're still going to have to do the work yourself. But what I'm hoping is to help you avoid, you know, there's some traps. There's some things that you might not know about. Uh, and if you take the normal route, you're going to, there's going to be mistakes that are made. And so my goal is to show you a side, a side route, some, some tricks, some tips that I have found that will save you a lot of time. They'll save you a lot of money and a lot of headache. So what do you need to learn to start? Well, the first thing is all the different business models. Cause there's there's not just one way to sell on Amazon. I'm gonna be honest with you. I have one that I believe is my favorite and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you and I'm pretty sure I can, I'm gonna be able to convince you it's the best way. But there are multiple ways to sell on Amazon and usually retail arbitrage, wholesale and private label are the most common ones that people know about. And these ones can work and under, uh, under different circumstances, these ones may or may not be right for you. I'm also gonna tell you how to find a product, how to find the product the right way, because a lot of the people doing the private label method of finding a product, it's, it doesn't work anymore. It worked three, four, five years ago, but now it's, it's too saturated. I'll, I'll talk about that later. I'm also gonna talk about how to make a brand for your product. We're, it's, it's 2020 right now and things are different on Amazon. No longer can you just put a junk product on Amazon. Again, three, four, five years ago, you could take a junk product from Alibaba, slap you know, a, a, a pretty poor sticker on it, just like a brand sticker on it, put it on Amazon and make money. No, like now what people wanna do is they wanna buy from a brand that they respect, that they love, that they care about. And I'm gonna teach you how to brand your product so people 
love it. So people actually, when they see it on Amazon, they're like, wow, that's a cool brand. Like I want to buy. People buy with emotions and I'm going to teach you how you can use that to your advantage. And the other thing I'm going to talk about that's related to this is how to create raving fans. Again, a big mistake that a lot of the Amazon gurus make is they think that they don't realize that their customers are real people. When you sell your product on Amazon, you don't want to just sell it to someone and have someone be like, oh, this is this is an okay product. You want to create raving fans. You want to create people that are, when they buy your product, they go tell other people about your product. That is the best way to market your product in 2020, probably for the, the, the next few years, is going to be word of mouth marketing. It, it, it kind of flipped in a lot of ways. And obviously, I'm going to tell you all the secrets and techniques to get to ranking number one on Amazon. But the biggest way to double, triple, quadruple your sales is to create raving fans. And there's a step-by-step formula on how to do this that I'm going to share with you. It's, it's very intuitive once I explain it. The next thing I'm going to talk about is how to test out your idea, how to make sure your idea for your product is a good one and how to raise money on Kickstarter. Again, I raised $15,000 on Kickstarter. I taught my girlfriend this method. She raised $5,000 for her product. She's she's never been an entrepreneur before. She's had a corporate job, like a, a full-time corporate job at the time, and she was still able to raise $5,000. This is how powerful these techniques are that I'm going to share with you. After that, I'm going to teach you how to find a manufacturer. A lot of people get hung up on this. A lot of people say, hey, I've got a great idea. Uh, I want to make it a reality, but how do I find someone to manufacture my product? And I actually, when I first started, I was so scared of this. I thought I was so nervous. How am I going to find someone to manufacture my product? But then what I realized is it's actually really easy because you've got to realize that the companies that do manufacturing, their entire business model is around making it as easy for you as possible to find them and to work with them. So a lot of times I was nervous about, Hey, how do I, I turn my product into a reality? And I would talk to my manufacturer and say, I'm not sure how do I find someone to design a logo? And they'd kind of walk me through it. They'd, I'd ask them, how do I find a box manufacturer for my packaging? They'd walk me through it. So I'm going to talk in depth about that. But if this is something you're worried about, do not worry. This is a very simple step. And I'm going to talk also about how to create a listing. This is a really important thing that just because you have a great product, if you don't have a good listing on Amazon, people might not buy it. And the li when someone's buying something online, they're not able to physically hold it in their hand. It doesn't feel real to them. So what you need to do is you need to make that product feel real before they buy it. You need to make it feel like they, they know what it's like to own it. And if they feel comfortable with it, and if they have those emotional connections with your product, they're much more likely to buy it. And I'm also going to talk about how to structure your title, how to make a good main image, the, the good side images, the other images, bullet points, description in-depth, everything you need to know. Again, this is everything you need to know in one video we're going to be talking about. Also, how to launch your product. I've already, I've already talked a bunch about this, so uh, stick around for that. But this is a crucial step, and it's related to making a brand and creating raving fans. Because if you have a lot of raving fans, when you go to launch your product, this is going to be a success. So we're ready to get started. Here's an overview with timestamps of what we're going to be talking about and some things to note. Uh, first, I'm going to go into depth about what Amazon FBA is because there is some misconceptions. I'm also going to talk about later why pri private labeling is dead, which is a controversial thing. But hear me out on this one. I think that you will agree with me by the end of this. And we're going to do some other things uh, like talk about Ariana. I'm going to go into depth talking about Ariana, my girlfriend, and, and her product Vino Cards and how she's been doing. I'm going to share her numbers with you as well as step-by-step -step how she did it and some of the mistakes we made as well. And of course, stick around for this. The last thing I'm going to do is tell you how to get my help for free, how to be able to join my mastermind for free, get my step-by-step -step, like instructional dense information all for free. So, so stick around till the end for that, but let's get into the meat of it. How does Amazon FBA work? Well, the big thing is you send your product to Amazon. You send it into the fulfillment center. So bear with me here, right? You get your product manufactured and you send it into Amazon's big warehouses. Amazon stores your product. You may have seen this in the news or things like this. Amazon is storing a lot of different products from a lot of different people. Then what happens is a customer purchases your product through Amazon and Amazon picks and packs your product. They, they, have, they go through their warehouse, they find your product that's picking it and they pack it, they ship it to the customer. This is how they're able to do Amazon Prime, which is two day shipping. It's because they're, they have a warehouse with all the different products and they have really good systems to basically find your product and ship it out to people very, very quickly. 
as I mentioned, eventually Amazon does deliver the package to the customer, usually within two days, if not a day, which leads to happy customers. People in the old days of e-commerce, I've been doing this for a while, in the old days of e-commerce, you'd buy something and you'd get it in seven to 10 business days. Now with two day shipping, it's like, who needs to go to a store anymore? I honestly forget sometimes that I can just go to a store and buy things. I think to myself, oh no, I have a vacation coming up soon and I need hiking boots. I don't have enough time to get it from Amazon Prime. Hmm, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pay for one day shipping. And then I forget, oh yeah, I can just go to REI. I can just go somewhere to go buy it. And that's the power of Amazon is because you're able to get things so quickly, I think people are more and more relying on Amazon. So the first thing we're really gonna dive into that might be uh, new information for a lot of you guys is the different business models. And there's four main business models for selling on Amazon. That's retail arbitrage, wholesale, private label, and creating your own product. Now, these first three, if you've been doing a lot of research about Amazon, you may or may not have heard of, and I'm gonna talk about the pros and the cons for all of these. So the first one is retail arbitrage. Basically, you buy discount items. You Maybe you find some things that are normally $30, and you find them on a deep, deep discount sale. It's $5, or maybe a store is going out of business, and you're able to get something that's normally $30 for $3, something crazy like that. You buy these discount items, and you flip them on Amazon. You go and you list them on Amazon's platform for the $30 that they're normally worth. And it's very low risk. One of the benefits of this is you know for sure it's going to work because, well, people are buying these products all the time and you're spending very little money. Or maybe you're only spending uh, you know, $100 to buy $25 products or whatever the number is for you. So it's low risk and there's low cash needed. You, need, you don't need very much money to start because you only need the money to buy the initial products and you should get the money back relatively soon. Now, one of the big downsides is it's not scalable. If you're constantly having to go out, find new products and flip them on Amazon, it's not something that you're probably gonna be able to replace your income from because you're having to constantly hunt and peck and, and go find those new items and it's just, it's not, in my opinion, a real business model. So this one didn't fit my criteria because my goal again was $300 a day passive income. To do that with retail arbitrage would be very, very difficult. So it's it's also not reliable because you don't always know what, what stores are gonna be having sales. You can't always guarantee that there's gonna be businesses going out of business. Though I will say with, with the way that Amazon's taking over, a lot more businesses will be going out of business, but you can't predict that. That's not a reliable source of, uh, that's not a reliable business model. So overall, I would say this is a bad business model. It does make sense for some people. If you, I, I've seen a lot of low income families that are able to make some side cash, or if you're a full-time student, this might be a good way to make some you know, side, have a nice little side hustle. But overall for me, if you want a real business, if you wanna make real money, I think it's a bad business model. Wholesale is another one. And it's, this is basically where you buy items at a wholesale price. So maybe you go to, and this isn't a perfect example, but maybe you go to Nike and they have $100 shoes, right? And you're able to buy those shoes for $50. And then you go and you sell them on Amazon. So that $50 shoe, you're able to buy it for $50. And on Amazon, it sells for $100. Well, you'll make some money. Now, keep in mind, there is Amazon fees and different things. So you're not going to make $50, but maybe you make $20 on every shoe that you do. It's relatively easy. The, the difficult part about this is it's all about connections. You need to know people, you need to know companies that maybe other people don't know about that you can wholesale from. Nike is a bad example because everybody knows about Nike. Everybody's trying to do that. It's way too saturated. But maybe there's some niche products that are not being sold on Amazon right now that you could go buy at wholesale and sell at Amazon. Now, one of the big cons for this is it's saturated and there's high competition. If it's easy for you to do it, it's easy for other people to do it. Also, if you're going directly to a manufacturer, you're basically acting as a middleman, right? Because you're buying products from a manufacturer and then you're selling it on Amazon. If the manufacturer ever decides to go straight to Amazon, which would make a lot of sense for them to do, you're cut out as the middleman and your business is over basically. So in my opinion, this is not a long-term business model. Again, I, I wanna be completely blunt about this. I know a lot of people, or I know I should re rephrase that. I know a few people that are making a lot of money doing this model on Amazon. So I'm not saying this is impossible, but I think as more and more wholesalers, like as more and more large companies realize the power of Amazon, 
they're going to be selling directly on Amazon. They're going to be cutting you out the middleman. My product, I've had people, I've had a lot of people email me saying that they want to wholesale my product and, and resell it on Amazon. And I always tell them no, because I'm going to sell it, my product on Amazon. I want all the profit. Why would I, why would I sell to so Joe Schmo to resell my product? And I think as a lot of these older businesses get smarter and understand how the internet works, they're going to be cutting out the middleman. But for the meantime, this is a business model that some people have gotten to work. The next one is private label. This is probably the most common one that if you've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, you know about. Private labeling in general, it's all about finding a winning product. The way private label works is you find a product that is selling well, maybe it has a high sales rank, a low number of reviews, and it's got a relatively bad listing. And what you do is you go create your own version of it. Maybe you go to Alibaba, you find that product, you slap your own brand on it. So you, this is called creating your own private label. It's an existing product already, and your private label is whatever label you put on it. Eventually, obviously, you sell this product on Amazon, and that's why it had so much power. That's why three, four, five years ago, this was working so well, is because there's a, there's a lot of private label brands out there, don't get me wrong, but they weren't being sold on Amazon. There was a lot of niches on Amazon that were not yet filled. A lot of products that were not being sold on Amazon. So this was a good opportunity three, four, five years ago. It's relatively hard to find a product, especially it's hard to find a product that there's not already 10 sellers on because it's, it's a relatively saturated market and it can be pretty expensive to start. It's going to cost you probably about $2,700 minimum to get started with private label. It could be $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, depending on what product. And the reason for this is you have to pay for all your products before you sell them on Amazon. Basically, you have to prepay. You have to buy a thousand units of whatever your private label is before you sell it on Amazon. Now, this is called the minimum order quantity. Like what is the number of units that you need to buy for a manufacturer to make it? A thousand is probably pretty realistic. Sometimes it, it depends on the product. This is more detailed than you need to know for this video, but trust me on this. It's one of the more expensive models to start. And as I mentioned, it's very saturated, very high competition. This has been around for a long time now. And three, four, five years ago, this was a really good opportunity, but because basically a bunch of people made money off this and then they started YouTube channels talking about how YouTube channels, Instagram started telling their friends about how great of an opportunity this was. And so now it's really saturated. I've seen a lot of people, they have a product idea and by the time that they implement that idea, by the time it becomes a reality, there's already six other sellers. So it, this is not my favorite model. It used to work really well. I don't recommend it. So what do, I, what do I do personally? What do I like doing? Well, I think creating your own product is going to be one of the next big opportunities. And basically what you do, it's exactly as it sounds, you create your own product. You create something new. You create something that isn't already being sold on Amazon. What you can do is you can take an existing product that's already being sold on Amazon and make it better. That's what I did with my product. My product, Performance Nut Butter, there was already nut butter being sold on Amazon. There was already like almond butter in pouches. But what I did is I made a better blend. It was macadamia, coconut, cashew. It still is macadamia, coconut, and cashew. And what's important about that is it's better. It's more premium. It's higher quality. I did better branding. My product, uh, the branding for my product is very niche down and it's targeted at a very specific market. And so it was a new product, but it wasn't revolutionary by any means. One of the benefits of this is you can sell it on Amazon and you can also sell it on Shopify. There's also no to low cash needed to start. Because of the fact that you can raise money with a Kickstarter, if you have $0 in the bank, this is one of the only models that could work for you. Now, I wanna make it very clear, if you have $0 in the bank, it's gonna be hard, don't get me wrong, but you're gonna to have to work hard, you're gonna to have to do a lot of marketing so that you can raise the money off Kickstarter. Kickstarter is not free money, but it's possible. And I raised, like I said, a lot of money via Kickstarter. And another thing I wanna note is that if you do have money, it's gonna make this entire process easier. If you do have $1,000 laying around that you can invest in this company, it's gonna make the entire process a lot easier. Another big benefit of this is there'll be no competition. With private label, by definition, you will have a, a other competition. You'll have competing products because you're all you're doing is you're taking an existing product and putting your own private label on it. When you create your own product, you will be the first product in that category because there's nothing else like your product yet that, that exists. And that's a huge advantage here. And you own the entire market. So for me, when I launched my product, there was nothing in the healthy on the go fat space, really. There was nothing in the keto, paleo, vegan, nut butter on the go 
I was the only one that was really targeted towards like athletes and, and, and keto individuals. So I owned a hundred percent of that market. Now I do want to make something very clear as time goes on, you will get more competitors. Like if, when people see you being successful, when people started seeing how successful I was at Amazon, I started getting competitors. But the cool thing about that is as you start getting competitors, the entire pie grows because these competitors are spending their own money on marketing. They're educating the population on the benefits of eating healthy fat on the go. They're, whatever your product is, these competitors are growing the entire pie. So even though I no longer own 100% of the pie, my sales have been relatively the same since launching. They, they've, they've had their ups and downs, but I haven't done almost any work in these last two years and my sales have been fine, even though I've had a ton of competitors come in. And that's because the entire market is growing. That's because the interest in products like mine have grown. In the past, I'd say, you know, one out of 100,000 people knew about a product like mine, but now it's maybe one out of 1,000 people. But there are some negatives with creating your own product. One of the big ones is it does take a little bit more creativity. Private labeling, wholesale, retail arbitrage is pretty much a very logical thing uh, from start to finish. You don't need to really think too much to be able to make those successful. With this one, you're going to have to ask yourself some questions. You're going to have to do a little bit of digging and figure out how you can make a unique product, how you can make something that people want. Now, I made this video to help you with that process. I think I've made it relatively step by step, but it takes a little bit more creativity. One other thing I didn't add to the bullet points here is that it does take a little bit longer before you start making money. With private labeling, it's gonna take between two to five months before you really start seeing sales on Amazon. And that's because at least two months because you have to order the product from China, maybe longer, but you have to order the product from China and then it's gonna take a little while before it gets to Amazon's warehouse. With creating your own product, especially if you wanna launch it on Kickstarter, you might have to spend a little bit more time actually thinking about your product and, and thinking it through and making it sure it's a good idea. But honestly, this process isn't as hard as I think I, when I first started, I thought this process was a lot harder. For instance, for my product, I literally just took out a, a blender and blended different nut combinations together until I eventually found something that tasted good. And then I took it to a manufacturer, but I did have to take a few weeks to make sure that I came up with a good recipe. So again, here are the four different business models, retail arbitrage, wholesale, private label, and creating your own product. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm really gonna be focusing on private labeling and creating your own product. Even though I'm not a huge fan of private labeling, there are some principles that you can learn. Like if you understand how private labeling works, there's some imp important principles that I'm gonna share with you that's gonna make it so you're gonna have more success on Amazon. And like I said, private labeling is dead. And there is three main reasons that I say private labeling is dead. The first one is oversaturation. The, there's so many people doing private labeling that it's very, very difficult to find a winning product. And even if you do find a winning product, what I've found, I've, I've had friends actually tell me this, they order the product from China and in the six weeks it takes to get from China to, to clear customs and to get into the Amazon, Amazon warehouse within those six weeks, five competitors will pop up and that's what happens. Anytime it's like the gold rush, you know, it was a really good opportunity, but then so many people ended up going there. I got oversaturated. There was just too much competition. But the other big reason why private labeling is dead is because of China. So you see a lot of people will order their products from China, but what China realized is they can go directly to Amazon. Again, private labeling, you can be, sometimes you're about like a little bit of a middleman because you're ordering products from China, usually China, but there's different manufacturers all over the place, but usually from China and you're putting them into Amazon's warehouse. But China is cutting you out. China is now starting to go directly to Amazon, directly sell their private label products on Amazon. Now, one thing to keep in mind is China isn't quite as good at branding as an American might be because if you're an American, you understand the American market, but it's something to keep in mind. It's why like the basic private labeling, the way things were done three, four, five years ago, it, that's why it's dead. And then the last one is Amazon basics. If you are selling a private label product and Amazon sees this, what they're going to do is they're going to copy your product and they're going to private label it themselves. This is, this is Amazon basics branded. The Amazon Basics is basically its own private label brand. And so Amazon saw that, oh, batteries, that's a very commonly sold items. Hey, why don't we make our own batteries? And guess what? When someone searches batteries 
Guess what kind of batteries are going to be number one in the search results? Amazon's own branded batteries. They have the power to force you out. I had a friend who was selling a backpack. He had his own private label backpack. Amazon copied stitch for stitch his exact backpack. And now if you search for backpacks on Amazon, guess what the first results are going to be? Amazon basic backpacks. And I did a very like in-depth video comparing private labeling to creating your own product. I'll put a link up above here and, and down below in the description. If you want more uh, on which one, like a more in-depth pros and cons on both these, check out that video. But what's the solution? Well, I believe the solution is to create your own product. You see, again, private labeling is taking an existing product, putting your own private label on it. But if you can create your own product, something that does not yet exist, you you cut out the middleman because you you're the creator of the product. You're able to do things that China can't do. That you're able to do things that Amazon Basics isn't willing to do. Because if you have a a unique product. Amazon is not going to copy it, assuming that you brand the product correctly. Like for instance, Amazon's never going to do Amazon branded nut butter, or if they do, they might do Amazon branded peanut butter, almond butter. But my product is is so niche that it's it's not worth Amazon coming after. Same thing with China. China would not copy my product because it takes another level of branding than they're willing to do. They're gonna go after both China and Amazon. They're gonna go after like the easy, low hanging fruit. What you need to do is figure out how you can improve a product, how you can make it better. And my recommendation for this is create something that you wish existed. Solve a problem that you have. It's it's called scratching your own itch. And there are different types of ways to create your own product. The, the bare minimum is to create something unique, create something different. The next level is if you can brand. So if you can create a unique product and brand it, that's really gonna set you apart. I'm gonna give you some examples of this in a second, but by far, my opinion, the best way to create your own product, the best way to sell on Amazon is to create what I call a passion product. Create a product that solves a problem that you have that you're passionate about it. This is creating a real company. This is what real companies do. I think one of the big shifts that people are going to start making is, as I mentioned earlier, they're not going to be Amazon sellers anymore. And you don't want to think of yourself as an Amazon th seller. Think of you as a business owner, a, a business creator that happens to sell on Amazon. And some of the most popular, some of the most profitable products in the history of the world have been passion products. Almost all real businesses are passion product businesses. So some examples of this are Nike, RX Bar is a good one, Brain Quick, and if you're familiar with Tim Ferriss, so as a quick side note, if you haven't yet read The 4-Hour Workweek, highly recommend it. That book changed my life. It's part of the reason I quit my corporate job. The way that Tim Ferriss in The 4-Hour Workweek was able to only work four hours a week was from this company, Brain Quicken, which is a neurotropic company, something that he was passionate about. Phil Knight created Nike. He was a track and field athlete, and he created Nike with the, the co-owner, which was his track and field coach who was obsessed with shoes. He even Phil Knight's autobiography, which I highly recommend reading, is called Shoe Dog. And then RX Bar, which was recently sold for, I think, a little over $500 million, and it was created by an individual in, in their kitchen that just mixed up different ingredients in like a like a little blender. A lot of these multi-million dollar and billion dollar companies are passion products, but you don't have to be, you don't have to be this giant company. Like I don't ever plan on selling my company for $500 million like RX Bar did. I'm doing $10,000 profit. Ariana's doing, my girlfriend who has a passion product is doing about $1,000 profit. But my big thing here is I wanna help, I wanna help you for free because I struggled for a long time until I figured out that that's how people are making money. That I, it took me a long time to figure out that the way to make money online was to sell something that you believe in. For a long time, I was selling products that I didn't believe in. Remember the dance clothing? Yeah, I was selling dance clothing, things that I didn't care about, things that I didn't believe in. And that's why I want to help you for free is because I wanna shortcut your results. I wanna make it so you learn everything that it took me five years to learn. I can just teach you for free. And as I mentioned before, I wish I could go back in time and lend a helping hand to my past self and, and pull myself up the mountain. I can't do that, but I can still help you. And that's the goal of this video. So let's get into it in even more depth, okay? As I mentioned, we're really gonna be focusing on private labeling and creating your own product. There are principles from private labeling and, and private labeling you can still make money with. Uh, there are some principles from private labeling that I think are helpful, especially with product research. But ultimately, in my opinion, creating your own product is the way to go in 2020 and moving forward. 
So next up, we're gonna be talking about how to find a product. Cause this is a big question. A lot of people are saying, hey, that's great. I'm on board. I wanna create a product. I'd love to create a product that I'm passionate about. And truthfully, who wouldn't wanna create a business that they enjoy working on? That was my goal with my business. But how do you find a product? Well, so here's our goals. We wanna find profitable products. It's not enough to find a product that you're passionate about. It's not enough to create something unique if it's not gonna make you money. You also want something that has high sales volume and that's related to profit. You wanna you want to make sure that it's actually going to be selling and I'm gonna show you some techniques to make sure that your product will sell. The next goal is that we want a product that has low to no competition. Ideally, you can own an entire market. You don't wanna have other people you're competing against at least in the early days and that'll make you stand out from the rest of the products on Amazon. Custom branding is another big thing that is, I think, essential in this day and age. In the past, you could get away with like crappy generic looking stuff, but nowadays you need something that stands out that makes your products like resonate with the customers. Again, people buy off emotions and if you have branding that people look at and say, wow, I love the design of this, I love the feel of this, your product is going to sell. We're gonna also talk about how to get it shipped to Amazon because you don't want to buy, you don't want to private label something that weighs 50 pounds. It's gonna be very expensive to ship it to Amazon. You don't want, there, there's, there's certain criteria here too I'm gonna to go over. And of course our goal is gonna be talking about how to optimize your listing and launch the product to page one of whatever search term, whatever search results you're going after. So let me give you a checklist of what you should be looking for when trying to find a product. So the first thing is you want a product with high sales. You want obviously something that's going to be selling a lot. And I'm gonna give you some instructions on how to, how to find that kind of a product. You also want something with low competition. Hopefully it'd be lightweight, ideally under a pound. So when you're thinking of ideas for your product, try to think of things that are under a pound. It doesn't have to be, but this helps out. Also something that's brandable. You don't wanna sell something super generic. You don't wanna sell, you want something that you can create a really cool brand around. And I'm gonna be giving you some tips on how to do this as well. Something that, a pro, find a product that has room for improvement. Don't find a product that's already been maxed out. Like there's certain products out there, th certain things that are being sold that they're as good as they're ever gonna get. And that's just the way it is. You wanna find something that you can make an improvement on. Remember, the way to make more money in life is to add more value to the world. So if you can find something that you can improve upon, you're gonna make more money. Ideally, it'd be something unique. Like when people see it, they're like, wow, I've never seen something like that before. That's a really important thing because if your product is generic, that's the other end of the spectrum, nobody's gonna take note of your product. They're not gonna talk about it. They're less likely to buy it. Another thing, this is ideally, this isn't mandatory, but consumable. So my product, Performance Nut Butter, is consumable. People eat it, and then next month they have to order more. Now, not all the products that uh, of people I talk to and people I work with are consumable, um, but it is helpful if it is. So that is something, if you can tune your mind to try to think of an idea that's consumable, that's great. Viral is another big one. So my product is consumable, but it's not super viral, uh, where my, my girlfriend's product is viral. So what do I mean by viral? When someone sees someone using your product, do they also wanna buy it? So Vino Cards, which is wine flash cards basically, it helps you host like wine tastings and things like that. People come over, same thing like with board games, right? People come over, if they play a board game at your house, they're gonna go home and they're like, wow, that was really fun, like I wanna buy that board game. Now my product, Performance Nut Butter, is somewhat viral because if you see someone eating my product out around, you're gonna be like, what the heck is that? And it might spark a conversation. But that's something to keep in mind. Does your product have some kind of innate virality to it? Another thing that a lot of people forget about is, is your product trending upward? So my product, it keto, at least for a while, it might, it might be changing now, but for a while, the keto space was trending upwards. Every year, more and more people were interested in keto. Um, healthy fat is for sure trending upwards. Every year, more and more people are interested in the healthy fat craze. At the time when I was doing this, I think paleo was trending upwards, but now the paleo diet's going downward. So I wouldn't personally launch something that was designed with the paleo diet in mind solely. So there's just some things, you wanna make sure that whatever product you release, that it's not a trend, like fidget spinners. Sorry, it's too late, don't, don't try to do fidget spinners, obviously. And the last and the most important thing, you see I bolded it here, the most important thing is make sure you have a premium product. You don't wanna to try to compete on price. You don't wanna be the lowest selling, the lowest cost, uh, product that you're selling, you wanna be the most expensive one. You wanna be the most expensive and the best product on the market. A lot of times people, if they're deciding between two products, some people will always buy the cheaper one and some people will always buy the more expensive one. 
I would rather be the the company that's selling it at the premium price. I'd rather have the best product on the market because you get better margins. If you are trying to compete with another product and you're both competing for the lowest mar margins, it's a race to the bottom. Eventually, one of you guys are going to end up being at break even or only making a penny per product. So try to be try to find a product that is premium and this will lead to much more profit for you. So our goal is to find a profitable product and this is called product research. You're doing research on a product that will hopefully make you a lot of money. Now, the way that a lot of private labelers do it is using tools like Jungle Scout. But I'm gonna tell you why you don't need Jungle Scout. Now, if you are a private labeler, you're plan planning on using that kind of methodology, Jungle Scout might help. And I do have a link in my description with a discount if Jungle Scout's something that you wanna use, but you don't need it. And what Jungle Scout helps you do is it helps you find products with high sales, low reviews, and overall that, that have bad listings. But I'm gonna give you a secret on how to get a lot of the functionality of Jungle Scout for free. And one of them is, if you actually, this is, you can use the free Jungle Scout estimator. They have a free version that not a lot of people know about. And what you do is once you find a product that you want to figure out what the sales are, you scroll down to the bottom, you go to the Amazon best sellers rank, you copy that and you paste it into this free Jungle Scout uh, tool that they have, and it'll give you the estimated number of sales per month. And it's pretty accurate. It's not always perfect, but that's a way to be able to get Jungle Scout for free. You can also use the 999 trick. I'm not gonna talk about that too much here, but basically you put in 999 into the uh, number of order, the number of quantity you want for a product, and then you do that day after day and it'll tell you, oh, this only has 141 of these available. Then the next day it might say it only has 100 available. So you know within that time frame about 40 have been sold. Now this is a flawed technique, but it can be helpful. And I, I did want to mention it. That way you don't feel like you need to pay for Jungle Scout. So what we're going to do here, we're going to try to learn how to create a product. The first thing is find products that are selling well and make them better, make a product better. You can do this, one of the ways you can do this is by adding a brand to it and really make, try to get that emotional connection with the customer so that they feel an emotional connection to your product. You can also add features and functionality. Like what could you do? What kind of features could you add to this product that would make it better than anything else out there? A big way, like, so if you wanna to try to find a passion product from from scratch, one of the things I recommend is trying to scratch your own itch. Figure out what issues you have in your life and find a solution to that. That's how I came up with my product. I wanted to eat healthy fat. Like healthy fat's this thing that's been trending in the news for a while. I wanted to be able to eat it, but on the go. Like when I'm traveling, I can get protein bars. I can get, you know, you can get carbs anywhere, but you can't really get healthy fat on the go. So that's how I scratched my own itch. One thing to do, you can go through your Amazon order history. You can look at all the different orders you've placed on Amazon and figure out basically what products do you buy often and figure out how you can make a better product. Another tip for you is look at your Amazon search history. And anytime you search something on Amazon, if no results come up, that is like a golden ticket. If you search for something and there's nothing there, that means you, maybe you should create that product. That's how we came up with the Vino Cards concept. And Vino Cards, again, is like wine flashcards. I searched for wine flashcards on Amazon and there was nothing. And I thought to myself, maybe that's an idea that I should create. Maybe that's an idea that my, my I ended up giving the idea to my girlfriend and she created it, but that's a really good way to come up with products. One thing I recommend is writing down one idea a day. If you start doing this every day, you're eventually gonna come up with a winning product. And throughout your life, every time you interact with something, ask yourself, how can this, be, how can this item be improved? And anytime you're doing activities that you enjoy, ask yourself, how could this activity be improved? Is there something that I could purchase or something that I could sell that would improve this activity? Another bonus tip is you can look at your credit card statements and see where do you spend your money? And that's one of the ways you can figure out what your quote unquote passion it is. Because if you're spending a lot of money in a certain area, you're probably very interested in that. For instance, I spend a lot of money in healthy food. I am willing to pay more money for food that makes me feel better. And I knew that that was a passion of mine. That's something that I spent a lot of time thinking about. That's why I created a product that was meant to make you healthier. Because I, I care a lot about that kind of thing. So I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you lots of ideas later, list of ideas for creating your own passion product. But stop really quick, and if you don't have an idea yet, if, if any of this previous section did not make sense, 
do not worry about it. If you don't already have an idea, don't worry about it. Watch the rest of this video and I guarantee it'll help you come up with ideas because the next few sections, the things I'm gonna be talking about will spark ideas and I'm gonna be giving you some, some of my own ideas that hopefully will start turning those gears in your brain. So next thing we're gonna talk about is how to make a brand. And I'm gonna rapid fire go over this because branding is, there's a science to it. And basically, why should you brand? It's because if you have a brand on your product, you can get more product, you can charge a premium. We've all seen t-shirts and clothing brands that are basically the same as the Walmart brand, but they charge three or four times. Nike is a good example of this. Nike shoes aren't that much better than other types of shoes. It's debatable. I don't want to get a bunch of hate mail from Nike fans out there, but you know what I'm saying. They're shoes, but it's that that logo, that brand is what makes them really stand out. And that's why Nike is such a profitable company. There's also a lot of loyalty. When people buy from your company, they buy from your company and, and like a lot of people that buy Ford trucks only buy Ford trucks and people that buy Chevy trucks only buy Chevy trucks. And I'm going to give you an overview of step-by-step -step how to brand. And then we're going to talk about how to come up with like how to name your product and how to properly brand it as well. Again, thing to remember is private labeling is dead. So this whole idea of selling a generic boring product is dead. You need to brand your products moving forward, especially if you're gonna be selling on Amazon or on the internet. So how to brand, we're gonna do an overview in just a second, but really quick, one of the most important principles with coming up for a brand is to have what's called an avatar. You wanna figure out who is the one person you're trying to sell your product to. And think about that person, think as much as you can about that person. Basically, I want you to write out a biography of this person. Try to find an image of what this person looks like. What what TV shows do they watch? What podcasts do they listen to? What YouTube channels do they watch? Like all the different things. Learn as much as you can about that person and try to create the perfect product for that person. If you try to create a product for everybody, oh, everybody's gonna love my brand. Nobody will love it. You wanna be polarizing. You want some people to love your brand and some people to hate your brand. We're also gonna talk about some things on how to, how to come up with a name for your brand. And I have some tips and techniques specifically on how to do this. We're gonna talk about the packaging. How do you make your packaging stand out? You don't want just generic looking packaging. No one's gonna pay a lot of money for generic looking packaging. But if your packaging looks beautiful, people assume that it costs more for your product. We'll talk about which colors. Which colors should you, you, you use and the different meanings associated with colors. This is something that's often overlooked, but color especially in packaging design, logo design is very important, very impactful. So one book I would highly recommend if you wanna learn a lot about branding is Primal Branding. It talks about how do you get in touch with that deep emotional part of our brain that loves branding. And, and the first element is a story. Every good brand has a story. How did this company start? Steve Jobs, it was uh, two people in a garage, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak started Apple. Nike, I already told you it was Phil Knight. Story can be very important and it can help make people very loyal to your brand. There's a creed, just do it from Nike. That's something you hear that and you know, and you think of Nike and you're like, yeah, you might really associate with that or it kind of gets some kind of emotional reaction in you. Icons, what's your logo going to look like? I, here's three pretty powerful logos. A logo is like a quick visual representation of your brand. What are the rituals? Hey, does someone consume your your food or, or your product every morning? Maybe it's like my product that's right, you know, an hour before a workout, it's time to eat a pouch of performance nut butter. And with Starbucks, you have it every single morning and it's repetitive. Things like that. Think about how can you ritualize your brand? Language. What is the language that people that buy your product, what, what do they use? For instance, with Starbucks, if I said, hey, it's a double tall, sugar-free, vanilla soy, extra hot latte, if you've never been to a Starbucks, that means nothing to you. But if you're a Starbucks regular, you're like, yeah, of course I know what that is. And you want some words, ideally, with your brand that the people, the insiders know and that the outsiders don't know. You also need, and this is really important, you need haters to have a strong brand. If your brand is strong enough, there needs to be people that hate your brand. With Performance Nut Butter, people that hate my brand or like the outsiders are people that don't eat healthy. Hey, if you like sugar, don't eat Performance Nut Butter. If you're someone that's into candy bars, don't do that. And as we talked about before, like Chevy versus Ford, for instance, 
Um, Mac versus Windows. People that really like Mac think Windows is the worst thing ever. And people that like Windows PCs think that Mac is just like overpriced. And obviously, um, this isn't always true, but you know what I'm saying here. You want to create that polarization. And finally, there's the leader. That's another thing that makes a strong brand. You have Steve Jobs with Apple, Bill Gates with Windows. You're going to be the leader of your own brand. And people like to follow other people. As much as people like to buy from brands, ultimately, they love to buy from people. So you need to make sure that your brand has a leader, which is you. So next, we're going to talk about how to create raving fans. And again, this is something that a lot of people skip over. And this is so powerful. Like, Stop thinking of yourself as an Amazon seller and start thinking of yourself as a company, a brand. And to be a strong brand, you need to create raving fans. But really quick, if you like this video so far, hit that like button right now. Because when you hit that like button, it lets YouTube know that this is a good video and it will keep showing this video to more people. So hit that like button right now. Let's talk about why create raving fans. Well, first off, raving fans will help spread the word for you. You can spend thousands and thousands of dollars in marketing or you can create raving fans and they'll go tell their friends. They'll go scream it from the rooftops. They'll post your product on Instagram. My product, I get a ton of people posting my product on Instagram for free. Why? Because they're raving fans. They love the company. They love the brand. Another reason to create raving fans is they're going to leave reviews. Who do you think leaves a five-star review? It's kind of a pain in the butt to re leave reviews. I rarely ever leave reviews. The only time I'll ever leave a review for a restaurant, for a product, is if I think, wow, this is amazing. And if I want to support that, that company. And that's really important in this day and age. If you want to rank high in Amazon, you're going to need to get five-star reviews. So creating raving fans is very important for that. So how do you create raving fans? Well, there's a few different ways. One of the ways that I did it is by creating a product launch group. So this is a Facebook group where I get I, I got all my potential customers, everybody that had an interest in buying Performance Nut Butter, I got them into a product launch group right there. So we had about, I think we had like 500 members before I launched on Kickstarter. And the way I got them was from Instagram. So I'd post content on Instagram and in my bio, I had a link and I, I said, hey, click on this link if you want to get a chance to win a free box of Performance Nut Butter. People would click on the link, they'd put in their email and I'd email them back and forth. I'd start a conversation and in that conversation, I'd try to develop a relationship with them so that when I started to, when I launched on Amazon, they were likely to leave reviews. Also, I would post in the product launch group, as I mentioned before, I'd post things, asking them questions, engaging with them, getting their feedback. Hey, which logo do you like the most? Hey, what do you think about this product packaging design? And guess what? When, when they gave me feedback, I would implement that feedback because here are people that saying, I want to give you money for your product. Here's my my feedback on that. And that's the most valuable feedback you can get. Some other ways that you can create raving fans is through podcasts, YouTube, all kinds of social media, Pinterest, Facebook, blogs, anywhere online or in person where you can connect with people. It's a chance for you to create raving fans. Now, what I recommend doing is trying to move people from a podcast, YouTube, Facebook into an email list so you can have a conversation with them and then ultimately into the product launch group. So my method again is to go from Instagram to basically saying, click a link in my bio to get a free sample. They would give me their email. And then from there, I'd email back and forth with them a little bit, try to develop a relationship, get them ultimately into a product launch group. And then from there, that's when the real community building starts happening. Because one of the other things that's really important about a Facebook group that's not that you can't get with email is you get a community in a Facebook group. Because I would post something and someone would comment something, then someone else would respond to that comment. There was discussion happening. With an email, especially if it's an email list, like when I see people sending out newsletters, I think to myself, it's like this overlord talking to all the peasants. You don't want that. You want to try to create a community. That's going to develop a lot stronger connections with your brand. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to test your idea out and how to raise money. A lot of people are nervous because they don't know, is my idea good enough? Uh, and also a lot of people say, hey, I don't have enough money. How am I going to raise money? And one of the best ways to test your idea before you spend any money on it is Kickstarter. And that's why I did a Kickstarter myself. I wasn't sure if I, my first production run actually cost around $25,000. And I didn't want to take $25,000 of my own money and put it into something, especially if I didn't know if it was going to sell. But when I raised $15,000 in 30 days on Kickstarter, I knew to myself that this was a good idea, that this could work. Now, the other big benefit of doing a Kickstarter is you can raise money. 
I didn't want to put $25,000 into this product. I, I don't, I barely had to, I don't even know if I had $25,000, but because I was able to raise $15,000, I was able to put the rest of the money in, which was still a lot of money, but I was able to put the rest of the money in knowing that it was a good idea. I already had $15,000 worth of people that bought the product. And I knew that if $15,000 of people already bought the product, that I'd be able to get more and more people interested in purchasing. The other thing, another big benefit of doing a Kickstarter is it creates buzz. What do I mean by this? When a Kickstarter, you've probably heard about some Kickstarter that does a million dollars in sales or some Kickstarter that does, does really well. Well, word travels quickly. And when people find a cool Kickstarter, especially if it's not yet funded, my goal was to raise $10,000. And if let's say hypothetically, it was day 28 and I only had raised $9,000 you're pretty sure that a lot of people are going to talk about it. And that's what doing a Kickstarter, that's one of the benefits of a Kickstarter is it creates a little bit of a buzz and it also leads to a better story. As I mentioned earlier, one of the ways to brand your product is to create a cool story. My, like when you do a Kickstarter, people feel like you're a grassroots kind of company that you're, you're raising money, you're pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and that's one of the big things that leads to a better story. My story, it's very honest. My story was, I had to raise money on Kickstarter to be able to launch my product and people feel like they know me. They feel like they've been with me to the beginning since the beginning. I still get emails of people saying, "Hey Travis, I actually supported your Kickstarter. I love what you're doing." You know, and, and we'll talk back and forth. People love being early adopters of a product. So let them be early adopters and also it's going to build your story. So how do you launch a Kickstarter? Well, the first step is to set up your Kickstarter. It's very simple. Uh, they have templates that you fill out. You just fill in a title, you fill in the description, and you're going to have to eventually film a video, which I'll talk about in a second. But one of the most overlooked aspects of a Kickstarter is the pre-launch sequence. So as I mentioned already, you've got people on an email list, you've got people in your Facebook group. A month before you do the Kickstarter, start letting people know the Kickstarter's coming soon. Two weeks before the Kickstarter, let them know that it's gonna be in two weeks. A week before, same thing, a few days before. The night before, say, hey everybody, really big deal, really big news, tomorrow's the big day. You wanna like treat it as if it's a movie. You know, you know how movies, a lot of times like Star Wars, when Star Wars comes out, there's a line around the block. The reason for that is there's been so much buildup, so much anticipation. You wanna do that with your Kickstarter. Another thing that a lot of people stress out about is the Kickstarter video. Don't stress out about it. Don't stress out about it. It's actually very simple to do a video and I've, I've done a high-end video for one Kickstarter and I've done like a lower-end video for a different Kickstarter. Honestly, if you're stressed about it, I would say, pull out your phone, maybe get like a tripod or something, and you can record a video like that. This is actually one of the things that I was really nervous about when running my Kickstarter is how to make a video. And I, if you have questions on that, feel free to reach out to me. I can help you structure your video, but it's, it's very simple. Basically, you wanna think about it as let people know why the, the benefits of your product, not just the technical aspects, but why people need your product and tell your story in the video as well. If you do those two things, you're gonna have a winning video. The last element of being successful on Kickstarter is trying to get PR. What do I mean by this? Reach out to blogs, podcasters, YouTubers, and give them your product for free and ask them to share with their audience. If you do all this stuff, you're going to be successful on Kickstarter. The next step after you launch your Kickstarter and after you've had a successful Kickstarter is to manufacture your product. So let's talk about how do you find a manufacturer? And as I said earlier in the video, it's actually so much easier than you probably think it is to find and work with a manufacturer. One of the biggest ways to find a manufacturer is from Alibaba. And this is specific, it depends on what kind of product you're selling. But if you are selling a product that could be manufactured in China, then Alibaba is the best way to find suppliers. And what you're gonna do is you're going to search on there. And I only recommend working with gold suppliers. Work with like the top tier, the best people. They're gonna be legitimate suppliers. And what you do is when you're on Alibaba, search for products related to your product, similar to your product, and start asking them. Communicate only through Alibaba though, at least in the early phase. That's my, my personal opinion. That way everything is documented. But start asking all these different manufacturers and saying, hey, I want X, Y, and Z done. Can you, can you do it? And if they can't do it, they'll probably redirect you to somebody else. Always when working with manufacturers, check the small print. Any kind of, if they have you sign any kind of legal documents or anything like that, 
always check that. And I've lost a few thousand dollars from not doing this properly. And I, I know it sounds obvious once you hear it, but it, it was not so much that I didn't check the fine print. I just didn't fully understand it. And then I ended up having a few thousand dollars worth of fees. And I do have a video coming out very soon. So make sure to hit that subscribe button because I have a very video coming out very soon about how I've lost over $47,000 on on Amazon. And it's going to be a video talking about the first two years of me selling on Amazon. So check, uh, click that subscribe button, but let's get back to it. Make sure to choose a the correct payment method. What do they want? Do you want PayPal? Do they want pay, uh, a credit card wire transfer? Now with my manufacturers, it's all via wire transfer, but if you can use credit card, it might be worth it to try to get those points. Uh, it's a, it, one of the best ways to travel for free is to get a credit card that has really good points and then start using it for business. Ultimately, when you're sourcing a product, I highly recommend building rapport. Don't make it just transactional. Try to build some kind of a connection. In my early days with Performance Nut Butter, my first manufacturer, I think they really they liked me because I was this new upstart company. I think they saw something in me and that's what's important. You want to work with a manufacturer where there's a good feeling. And this is probably one of my biggest tips with picking a manufacturer. Go with your gut. If your gut tells you that there's something off, run away. So always try to listen to your gut with that. Um, and also make sure to negotiate. That's the business side of it. So there's the, the emotional side, be a good person, all that kind of stuff. But the business side is make sure you're getting a good deal. Try to go to multiple different manufacturers and can make them pit them against each other. Say, hey, Steve over there said he's able to do it for $10 a unit. And um, you said that it was 11. Can, can we get it down to 10? You know, really try to negotiate with this. Some other tips for finding suppliers is Google. Google is the world's most powerful search engine. Even though a lot of manufacturers, they don't have the best websites, you can still find a lot of people on Google. You can also go to trade shows. For instance, for my company, it's a food-based company. There's the Natural Foods Expo, and you can go to this expo and you can just walk the halls, and there's a lot of manufacturers there that can make the product for you. You can also use Jungle Scout. So Jungle Scout does have a tool that allows you to find suppliers. What it basically does is you can go to any product on Amazon, pretty much any product, and put it into this tool and it'll tell you who the manufacturer is. That is a super powerful tool. It's like, I'm not a big fan of Jungle Scout for product research, but this aspect of the tool, this tool, it's, it's pretty powerful, especially if you have issues finding a manufacturer. But other than that, start calling people, start emailing people. And as you call manufacturers, you tell them exactly what you want. They might not be able to do it, but they probably know other people that can. And it's, it's really surprising. I've had a lot of manufacturers tell me about their competitor because they say, hey, you know, we actually don't have that machine, um, but so-and-so over at some other manufacturing company does have it, go with them. And there's kind of like this buddy-buddy system between, even though they're competitors, all these different manufacturing companies, there's this idea that they know that if they refer business to them, they'll get business referred to them uh, themselves at other times. So start emailing, start calling. It can be a little intimidating, especially in the beginning, but especially a lot of manufacturers in the US, they don't answer email as well. Uh, they're, they're old school. So they like getting on the phone. They like talking like that. So start doing that today. Now we're going to be getting into all the questions. I'm sure you have a lot of questions about how to sell on Amazon. We're going to get into all that in just a second. But first, we need to talk about how to create your listing and how to launch your product. You're At this point, You've done all the hard work. You've created your product. You've you've got it. You've got to raise the money on the Kickstarter. You created your product. It's time to list it and time to put it on Amazon. So when you're creating a listing on Amazon, one of the most important aspects that a lot of people overlook is keyword research. At the end of the day, Amazon is a search engine, right? People are on there searching for products to buy. When someone searches a a, a phrase. That's called the keyword. So for my product, it might be keto snack. And when someone types in keto snack, I'm trying to get my product ranked high. Keto snack is the keyword. So do some research and figure out which keywords you wanna rank for. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, a bunch of different tools. I'll link a video down below on exactly how to do keyword research. 
after you do keyword research, you're going to want to do some kind of photography. And I'm pointing this out really quickly here. A lot of people actually take images of their product or they'll pay a professional to take image images. What I would recommend doing instead is getting a computer rendered image. So this image right here, if you really pay attention, you really look at it, you can tell that it's made by a computer but it's actually way more professional looking than a professional photo ever could be because it, it's just, it's nicer, it's cleaner, and you're able to do things with, with uh, computer generated images you can't do with professional photography. But this is, of all the places to spend money and all the places to spend a lot of time, this is the most important thing. Because when people are searching on Amazon for a product, the first thing they look at is the image. That's what makes them determine whether or not they want to pay attention to your product. Another very important thing is the title. And you want to take all those keywords that we did in the keyword research phase and put those keywords in the title because Amazon knows that if someone is searching for ketogenic or vegan friendly, that my product is vegan friendly. And it's more likely to put my product higher in the search results because these keywords appear in the title. Bullet points is also very important. Realistically, when people are looking to buy your product, they're only looking at a few things. They're looking at the title, the main image, the bullet points, and, and one other thing we're gonna talk about in just a second. But the bullet points, you wanna have in there all the benefits of your product. Why would someone want to buy your product? Don't give the technical aspects. Don't say it's 1.06 ounces per pouch. Instead, say it's 190 no, 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 not even 190 calories. That's still technical specs. Instead, say, this is going to fuel you and give you energy all day long. Energy all day long or energy right before your workout means something. 190 calories doesn't really mean something to most people. Another thing is the description. So if you look at an Amazon listing and you scroll down, you'll read the description to get more information. Now, 90% of people, 99% of people will never read the description, but this is one more way to set your product apart. And finally, probably the most important thing other than the main image is the reviews. My product has, at the time of recording this video, around 379 reviews with an average of four and a half stars. What does that mean? That means it's a good product. That means that if you're comparing my product to another product that has four stars, three and a half stars, three stars, you're more likely to buy my product. And that's really important. And we're gonna talk about in just a second how to launch your product and how to get reviews but one of the key things about properly listing your product or thinking about how your, your product's gonna appear on Amazon is thinking about the reviews. So now let's get into the last element before we get into the questions. And this is how to properly launch your product. Everything has been leading up to this. This is the crucial moment of you launching your product on Amazon. But before we get into that, remember the most important part, how to get my help for free, how to join my community, how to get my step-by-step my -step in-depth course for free, my one-on-one -on -one mentorship, all that stuff. I'm gonna be giving details on how to get that in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about how to launch your product. Again, when you're launching your product, one of the most important things you're gonna think about is how can you get as many reviews as possible while still following the terms and service of Amazon. Amazon, you, you can't do, don't do shady things. Don't do shady things to try to get reviews. And the way you're gonna do this is by building hype. Just like we did with the Kickstarter, have a campaign leading up to the launch of your Amazon uh, product. Tell, email everybody. Let them know a month ahead of time of when the date that your product's going to launch. Send them personal messages on Facebook. Send them DM, DMs on Instagram. Do anything and everything you can to build hype. Post on your social media. Post on Instagram. Uh, one of the things I did is videos. I would film videos basically uh, every day leading up to the launch, like letting people know what I'm doing, getting people exciting. My goal was to try to get people excited. And one of the best ways to do this, in my opinion, is the launch group. Because this is a community, you can post things in there and get feedback and let people know that your product's gonna be coming. Organic re reach on Facebook, so if you post something on Facebook or post something on Instagram, the organic reach is actually really low. That's not true with a Facebook group. Facebook is much more likely to show your post in a, if you post something in a Facebook group, it's most much more likely to come up on someone's feed because they don't see it as advertising. They think they see it as like having engagement, community and relationships. And another thing, as I mentioned, is emails. Make sure that email list you've been building up, this is the time to send out mass emails and let everybody know. And remember, you're doing 
your customers a favor. You're letting them know that your product's going to be on sale on Amazon for a week during the launch, and that's going to incentivize them to go purchase. And because you did build this community, you built this launch group, they're more likely to leave reviews. They've been along for the ride. They've helped build the product. And of, of course, they're going to want to, of course, they're going to want to contribute to your success and to the company's success. PPC is one other thing to keep in mind. Once you get a few reviews on your Amazon listing, you can use PPC, Amazon PPC or pay-per-click. It's a way to market your product. And in a nutshell, the way it works is you might pay a dollar per click and you, you'll tell Amazon, every time someone searches for the phrase keto snack, I want you to show my product and I'm willing to pay $1 per click. And you don't necessarily need to do this. I did not do this in the early days, but it's one way to get even more sales in the early days. Overall, the goal is to optimize your listing as much as possible before the launch and then do all the things we just talked about here for your launch. So now I wanna get into all the different questions and I'm sure at this point you probably have some questions. I'm gonna answer some of the most common questions I get and then after that, I'm gonna be talking about the most important part of this entire video, how to get my one-on-one -on -one help for free, how to join my mastermind for free, how to get my in-depth, like step-by-step -step guide, my course basically for free, and how to get some free one-on-one -on -one consulting time with me. I'll be talking about that as soon as we're done with the questions here. At this point, do you have a question? If you have something you wanna ask me, leave it in the comments down below. This video is only valuable if you actually treat it, again, treat it like you spent $1,000 on this. If you spent $1,000 on this, if you were unsure about something, you would for sure ask me. So put it in the comments down below and I'm gonna respond, I'm gonna do my best to respond within 24 hours. I respond to every single comment. So leave that question down below. Now the first question I get asked often is, how much time do I need to spend per week working on my Amazon business? And my answer is, it depends. I would say at least one day a week, two to four hours every week is the minimum. If you're doing less than that, you're, you're probably not dedicated enough to making this successful. When I taught my girlfriend how to sell on Amazon, she had a full-time job. She was you know, very active with her friends. She was helping out around the house, doing some cooking, doing some cleaning, and she didn't have a lot of extra time. And she spent about two to four hours a week every week and was able to launch on Amazon. And the big question, I, I guess the big thing I want you to think about is money versus time. If you have a lot of time, then that's okay. You know, use your time and, and take your time and grow this business. But if you don't have a lot of a time, you can use money. You can always hire a virtual assistant. You can always pay people. For instance, if you have a ton of time and you wanna do it really cheap, you wanna start your business really cheap, create, your own lo create the logo yourself. Do all the graphic design yourself. But if you don't want to spend 40 hours figuring out how to create a good logo, you can pay someone on Fiverr, you know, 20 bucks to make a logo that's going to be halfway decent. So it, it, it isn't a balance between money and time. But my big question to you is how will you spend your spare time? You probably, if you're watching this video, you probably have other things that you're doing in your life. Like you probably can't dedicate 100% of your time to Amazon. But my question is, how many hours are you spending watching TV? How many hours are you spending doing things that aren't important? Do you think you could take two to four hours a week to focus on this? My answer for you is probably yeah, and it's gonna 100% be worth it. The next thing is, how much money do you need? And the answer is zero dollars. You don't need anything. Hopefully I made it clear in this video. You can raise all the money you need with a Kickstarter. Now. Does it help if you have 200 bucks? Yeah, if you got 200 bucks, you can spend. It'll save you a lot of effort. Like I said, you might be able to spend some money on a logo. You might be able to spend some money on different tools that are gonna increase your productivity. 500 bucks, it's gonna make it even easier for you. Uh, and the more money you have, again, the easier this process is gonna be, but you don't need a ton of money. You can spend your time, you can spend the hard work to make up for not having so much money. Now you might be wondering how long will it take before you start making money off Amazon? My answer is about three to six months. It, it could be, if you're really hustling, maybe three months. I believe when I, I helped Ariana create her product, it took her about six months from idea to actually being able to sell it on Amazon and then give it maybe another month or two before you really start to see the profit coming in. But it's about three to six months. Again, this business model, if you can't pay your bills and you're looking to make quick cash, don't, Amazon's not for you. It's a great way to make a lot of money, but it's not gonna make you a lot of money tomorrow. It's gonna take some time. It's a business, it's a legitimate business. 
Another question I get is how much can you make? And there's, there's really no limit. I think I, this is a question I get a lot, but it's kind of a silly question. In this day and age, I mean, Amazon's such a big platform. You can make so much for from it. And don't think about your product as just being able to sell on Amazon. Even though my product performance is not better, most of the sales come from Amazon. A good percentage or some some of my sales come from Shopify. And if I wanted to, I could start selling my product on wholesale and I could probably make more money from my product on wholesale than I can even on Amazon. So there really is no limit. I think this is kind of a silly question. Again, we're going to do income reports for both Ariana and me in just a second. I did show you my two-year income report earlier in this video, but I'll do like my monthly income report and I'll show you Ariana's income report. A lot of people also ask me, how do I know for sure that my product will sell on Amazon? And one of my biggest things that I tell them is you gotta test. So test on Instagram, see if people are interested. If nobody follows your Instagram profile, then your idea is probably not that good. Or this could be true, you could do it via YouTube. If you make a bunch of videos about whatever your product is and nobody cares about it, then maybe your idea isn't that good. And you can also test on Kickstarter, that's what I did. If you launch your product on Kickstarter and nobody buys it, it's not a good idea. You can also use Jungle Scout, right? You can go find products that are similar to yours and see how many sales those products are getting. And that'll let you know like how much money is being spent in, in your specific market. And finally, like I mentioned before, is Kickstarter. You definitely, if you're gonna be creating your own unique product, it definitely makes sense to do a Kickstarter, not just to raise money, but also to test out your idea to make sure it's worth pursuing before you actually before you actually spend all the money on production. There's also a lot of what ifs. People always ask me what ifs, like what if my product doesn't work? What if I create this business and it fails? And I hear this over and over again, four out of five businesses fail. Well, first off, four out of five businesses fail within the first five years. That's the actual number. You can make a lot of money from a business that fails after five years. You know, if, if it takes five years for your business to fail, that's actually not that bad. And also keep in mind, four to five people aren't watching a YouTube video. I'm actually really proud of you. You've made it this far in the YouTube video. Chances are you're likely to be one, one of the one out of five. And that's one of my biggest things. When I see people starting, when I hear these kind of statistics, people always say four to five businesses fail. Yeah, four to five people don't read books or they don't learn from other people's mistakes like you're doing right now. On top of that, when I was quitting my job, everybody would say this to me, hey, you're, gonna, you're quitting this job and you're gonna go try to start a business, four out of five businesses fail. And my answer to them was, okay, if four out of five businesses fail, I'll start five. Obviously, I would say that jokingly, and the truth is, after you launch a business, if it does fail, you'll learn so much from that failure that when you go to launch a new business, the chance of success will be much, much higher. So what do, what do you do after the launch? Well, it's up to you. And you can do PPC, Amazon's PPC, to, to get more sales. We talked about that earlier. And I do have a video, I'll, I'll link a video down below with like a full length tutorial on how to do Amazon PPC. You can also launch your product on Shopify. Shopify is a way for you to build your own website. Shopify is like a, there's, there's different ways to host your own website. I would either recommend WooCommerce or Shopify. This would be, for instance, for me, it's performancenutbutter.com. If someone goes to my website, I own the customer. I, I, Amazon can't kick me off, right? If I'm selling a product on Amazon's platform, they can kick me off whenever they want. Where with my Shopify site, they, I own it basically. So that's one of the things you can do after launch. And another thing that you can do after launch as well is go start enjoying your life because Amazon is, Amazon will take care of all the hard parts, right? It's going to take care of a lot of the marketing. It's going to hold the inventory for your product. The only thing you're going to have to do is order your inventory every so often. Every few months, you're gonna have to place an order and, and maybe handle the logistics to make sure it gets shipped to the Amazon warehouse, which you can pay other people to do for you. So here's my typical income report. In a typical month, I'm making about $34,000 in revenue. And then I have the cost of the product. So to pay for the product that I'm selling on Amazon, that $34,000, it cost me about $9,000. There's also the Amazon FBA selling fees. And this is the pick and pack fee. This is the money, every time one of my products is sold, it's how much Amazon charges me to pick from the warehouse and ship it out. There's also the transaction fee, which is a flat 15%. It, it's 15%, no matter what you sell on Amazon, there's a 15% fee. There's also just random other fees, storage fees, things like that. that was a, that's about 200 bucks on a typical month for me. PPC, Usually I'll spend about $2,500 or so. And then there's just other fees for running my business. These fees include things like 
I have virtual assistants. A lot of the boring parts of running a business I have outsourced to my virtual assistants and I pay them. There's also things like LLC fees and just random, there's, there's always random expenses with running a business. So in a typical month, I'm doing almost $12,000 profit. And Ariana, my girlfriend that I've been talking about throughout this video, I taught her how to sell on Amazon. So I, obviously I'm really happy with how much money I'm making. Not everyone's gonna make this. Some people make a lot more. A lot of the people I know that sell on Amazon, my friends, my mentors, they make way more money than me at Amazon. I'll be honest, it's it's, uh, it's a little embarrassing at times, but at the same time, it's okay. I, if I really wanted to increase my sales, I probably could, but my goal, as I've mentioned before, is more, I enjoy helping other people sell on Amazon, and I'm making enough for my Amazon business that I'm happy, I'm making enough that I can pay the bills, travel, do everything I wanna do. Uh, so again, I taught my girlfriend how to do it, and. In a last month, actually, which was her biggest month, to be fair, she did about a little over $6,000 in revenue. The cost of her product was around $1,300. Her selling fees, $1,300. Her transaction fees, almost $1,000. Other random Amazon FBA fees, like storage fees, just little, you know, they can nickel and dime you at times, but it's not, it doesn't really cost that much in those kind of fees. PPC, she spent about $800, and then there was just some other fees associated with selling on Amazon. In total, she did about $1,400 profit. That's really good. I'm really proud of her for that. And I, the reason I'm, I'm putting this out there is just because I think it's important to note that even if you don't have a huge, like I consider what I've done a huge success in my eyes at least, at least even if you don't have a huge success, $1,500 in a month is still really good. She recently quit her job, and now she's doing Amazon full-time, and that $1,500 pays her bills. And so let's walk through step-by-step step very quickly how Ariana did it. And then I'm going to tell you how I will help you, how to get my help for free. So she had the idea. We talked about the idea. It was vino cards. And it's basically wine flashcards. And it's, it came up because we were both interested. We were both doing wine tastings and we wanted to learn more about wine. And we looked on Amazon and this idea no one was selling this idea already, and, and we thought to ourselves, hey, why don't we create this product? She created an Instagram and started posting on the Instagram and started getting followers. You see there, she had like 3,500 followers. People were interested in this product, and she had a link down below in the bio saying, hey, if you want to receive a, if you want a chance to win a free box, click the link in the bio and enter your email. She then got everybody into a product launch group and did the same thing. She showed people logos. She showed people the, the design elements of her packaging and got feedback. Then she raised, as I mentioned, about $5,000 on Kickstarter and we manufactured the product. And I'll, I'll link down below. She just did, we just did our one year video. Uh, she's been selling on Amazon for about a year and we've made a lot of mistakes with this business. Do not get me wrong. We've definitely made some mistakes and I'll, I'll put the link down below um, about some of the mistakes we made with manufacturing specifically, but ultimately we, we got the product manufactured, we listed it on Amazon, and we launched it. And this was the big thing. We did all the tips, all the tricks. We got a bunch of reviews, a bunch of sales right away, and it led to Ariana making $1,500 last month in profit. And overall, she's probably, she's made, I don't know the exact number, close to $10,000. And so here is my goal for you. My goal for you is to help you earn an extra $10,000 a month in six months. Now, that's a high goal. Not everyone that I help is gonna be able to achieve that. That's what I'm doing, and I know that if I can do it, I know that you can do it as well. But my question to you is, if you were able to make an extra $1,000 a month, like Ariana is able to do, how would that change your life? Would that change your life? And if it would, isn't this opportunity worth doing as soon as possible? So I wanna help you for free. And I'm not gonna be helping a ton of people. I'm gonna be helping about 20 people. And if you are interested in, in getting my help, I'll give you some details on how to get that. But here, for those 20 people that do want my help, this is what I'm going to be giving to them. I'm going to be giving an in-depth course. It's it's a thousand dollar value course. I'm going to be giving it to you for free. It's probably, I think, 10, somewhere between seven to 10 hours of content, six weeks of group Q&A calls. That's where you, me, and a bunch of other people, uh, 20 other people or so, get on a group call and we all help each other. I mean, you can ask me questions in this. I'm also gonna give you lifetime Facebook group access. So I have a private Facebook group just for people that I'm helping out, just for people that have joined my program, and you're gonna get access to that. You're also gonna get two private one-on-one -on -one calls, just, just you and me. Uh, these are hour-long calls, $500 value. I usually charge about $250 per hour for one-on-one -on -one consulting. I'm gonna give this to you for free as well. A checklist on how to step-by-step 
launch your product. There's like an in-depth, because one of the big things when I first started, when I first quit my job, I wasn't really sure. I never knew exactly what the next step was. Well, I've systematized it and I can tell you step-by-step step what it was. And this checklist alone is worth $100. And I've got some other things, some other bonuses like that. And I'm going to be giving away all my courses, all four of my bonus courses as well. As well, That's my Facebook ads course, my Google ads course, step-by-step step how to uh, create an e-commerce website and a Shopify course that I have. That's over $5,000 of value for free. Now, there's two reasons I'm doing this. And I want to be very, very clear because I, I understand like why, why, would you, why would I do that? I'm sure that's a question you might be asking yourself. And one, as I mentioned, if I could go back in time and I could help this guy right here, this person, me, if I could help me when I first started, as I mentioned, I was depressed. I was struggling. I had a lot of anxiety. I was in a really bad place. And if I could have had someone, a mentor, if I could have a mentor go back and tell me step by step how to be successful on Amazon, how to be successful in internet marketing, it would have changed my life. It would have completely changed my life. And obviously I don't have a time machine, so I can't go back in time and help myself, but I can help you. So that's the first reason I'm doing it. The second reason that's a little bit more selfish is testimonials. So I have this Amazon course, but I need success stories. I need you to be successful because that's one of the best ways. If you want to try to sell a course, you need to have a success story. So I need your success story. And as I mentioned, people don't value things for free. I've tried to help out a lot of people. I've tried to teach a lot of people how to do this for free. There was one kid in particular, I think he was 18 years old and he, he was telling me, oh, I'm so dedicated. I wanna, I wanna follow your method. Please teach me how to do it. And I spent probably 40, 50 hours uh, talking to him over the phone, whatever, doing all that kind of stuff. And he launched his Kickstarter and the day before he launched his Kickstarter, he ended up deciding he didn't really, he wasn't that serious about it. He didn't want to do it anymore. He launched his Kickstarter. It didn't do well and he gave up and that crushed me. And so I don't, I, that I've realized over and over again, when I try to help out people for free, they don't value my time. So I need something to know that you're serious. And what I ask for is a refundable deposit. Basically what I ask is that you give me a deposit to guarantee that you're committed, to guarantee that you're gonna be successful. And there's two ways to get your deposit refunded. The, the first way and the way that I hope you get your deposit refunded is when you complete the training, when you actually follow through and launch a product, I don't, I, I mean, I want you to be successful, but the truth is, as long as you go through and you actually put in the effort, even if it's not a success, I'd still give you your deposit back. This, the, the whole idea of the refundable deposit is just to make sure you're going to go through the process. Make sure I don't waste my time. That's the big thing. I want to make sure, because I've again, I've tried to help a lot of people for free, and most of them, it ends up being a waste of my time, and I don't want to see that. So as long as you follow the checklist that I give you, and I mean, if it's not perfect, if you miss a few different things, that's not a big deal. But as long as you 90%, 95% of the way follow the checklist and launch a product on Amazon, you'll get the money back in free, making all the things that I'm giving you, all the one-on-one -on -one consulting, totally free. As long as you're gonna do it, it's free. And again, the reason I'm doing this is I wish I would have bought a course when I first started, but I was too stubborn. I was too cheap and too stubborn and I, I wasn't willing to pay money for a course, which is silly in retrospect. And I wanna help people like me that are maybe a little bit stubborn, but that need the help. And I'm assuming if you've watched this much of the video, this is you. You're one of those people that could benefit from the help. The other way that you can get the money back is, I, I, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. If we start working together and you decide at any point that you don't like my methodology, you don't like anything I have, like you don't like some aspect of it, I will give you your money back for free. A lot of people say with a 30 day money back guarantee that there's no questions asked, but that's not the case with me. If you do want your deposit refunded, I will ask one question of you. And the one question will be, is there anything I can do to help you succeed? Anything I can do to make sure you don't quit on your dreams? Because I don't want you to quit, but at the same time, I'm gonna make it very easy for you. If you say no, there's nothing I can do to help keep you in the program or help answer any of your questions. From there, I would just send you a form that you fill out, a quick questionnaire, and you get your money back. It's, it's really painless. And the whole reason I'm doing this is not to make a bunch of money. Well, in the long run, sure, I'd like to make money. But right now, my goal is to get success stories. And if I get enough success stories now, one year, two years, three years from now, I can have a really killer course that I can sell and make a lot of money from. But right now, 
you're in a really good position because I need you, I need success stories, and I'm willing to basically trade my time, energy, and effort in exchange for your success and getting a testimonial from you. So I'm looking for just 20 people. I'm looking for 20 people that I'm gonna help. And part of the reason is I don't, I, I'm still running my business. I don't have a ridiculous amount of free time. And so I wanna keep the group relatively small. So if you're interested, I'm opening up registration next week on Tuesday. It's only gonna be open for a week and it's only gonna be open for the first 20 people that sign up. And I'm, I'm willing to help you in free in exchange for a testimonial. There is a sign up link down below. If you, you click on the link, put in your email and I'll send you a personal email. We can have a little bit of a conversation, see if you're a good fit. And remember, registration is only going to be open for a week. I probably won't launch this again for another month or two. Now, if you're watching this in the future and the registration period is already closed, still sign up down below. I plan on relaunching every few months. So I will open up registration again, but no matter what, if you want to get my help for free, click on that link down below, sign up. And if nothing else, we'll have a little bit of an email conversation back and forth, seeing if you're a good fit, seeing if you can be one of the success stories for this process. And the fact that you've made it this far in the video means that I believe in you and I want to see you succeed. So click that link down below and I look forward to talking to you.